All right, folks, we are back with the Reggae Money Show with Ron Costa and Miguel Dotris. And, Miguel, we're about to answer the question of questions here. If you were in us for part one, you know that the uh, problem with a lot of the startups is they don't have access to the money to actually start a reggae. But Robert J. from Los Angeles, California, asked us the question. What do you say to that question, Miguel? What do you think? All right. So, Robert, and everybody else that's out there listening uh, to the Reggae Money Show with me, Miguel Dotras, and Ron Costa. We're going to kind of break this thing down. And, and the best way that I could, I can, the best way that I think of breaking this down is there's a, essentially three different venues that an upstart or what we consider a contender uh, uh, here on the show, what we qualify as a as a contender. It's a startup, small company, not a lot of capital, looking to access capital what they need to do to kind of get that first initial seed money. All right, well, here, here it is in a nutshell, guys. The first round, okay, I'm going to break this down into rounds, okay? The first round of this is always what everyone says that you need to have, which is you need to have your business plan. Along with your business plan, you need to have what's called a term sheet. And a term sheet is going to kind of outline the terms of the money that you want to get. So let's just say, let's put a round number on it and say, we're looking to do $250,000 because we need $150,000 for our reggae campaign. And we need another $50,000 for, for capital to kind of get us through the first six months or so while we're getting this done. And then we're going to have another 50 in reserves just in case we need to really pump out some more marketing. So we want to have a little bit of reserve. So that's 200. So where do I get this first 200? Well, if I was doing a reggae, the, uh, if I was doing a reggae, the first thing that I would do is I would put my term sheet together. I would look to see what other potential companies are similar to my company to find some kind of basis for my offering for what I would say essentially to my initial investors, to say to them, my founders, my founding investors, because whatever that number is, so say, so say it's a dollar run, okay? I would go and I would say 75% discount. I would say a, a quarter, a quarter. Why a quarter, Miguel? Well, a quarter is enough, you know, uh, uh, to put a dent in it, but not enough to, uh, to hurt anybody. Okay, because you're going to go to your friends and family first of all. That first round is friends and family. You want to go to them with a really good deal, with a really strong term sheet that says, look, this is what I'm trying to put together. This is what I'm going to use the funds for. This is what I'm considering of doing. Now, you can only talk to people who are qualified investors or people who you have an arm length relationship. And you can only have up to 30 people participate in your offering that are not qualified investors. So the one thing that I always say to people is, hey, if you're really considering on doing this, the last thing that you want to do is go public and not tell your friends and family that you went public and they missed out on a huge opportunity, okay? Because that's the last thing that you want to do is go to your brother and say, look, uh, you know, I went public six months ago. Uh, my stock is trading at $3, but you know what? I was kind of embarrassed to ask you for the money, so I did it, and, uh, you know, I just cut you out of the deal, right? Can you imagine what your brother's going to say to you? Dude, I would have bought, bought for $0.25. Cents. I would have taken, you know, $1,000 off your hand. I would have taken $5,000 off your hand. You know, damn, you're my brother. You know what I'm saying? So, so you want to go to you want to go to the immediate you want to go to what I call the immediate circle of influence, the people that influence your life, the people that you influence theirs. You want to go to them and you say, "Look, I got a good deal. The reason that I got this good deal is because because you are who you are in my life, and I want to be able to share this opportunity with with the people that are you know that have influenced me and that I influence them." Okay, that's the first round, Ron. Okay, that's, that's the initial, you know, you've you got to be able to sell a couple of those people. Because I tell you what, if you can't sell a couple of those people, pack up your bags, put the, take, the PP, take, the, take the business plan, take the term sheet, find a filing cabinet that's circular, and file it. Okay, well, because you can't yeah. do it. 
You can't do it. Because if you don't have enough passion behind your project to be able to get one or two or three of those people around you to put some money in, uh, you know, we're not going to make it. I'll tell you right now. We're not going to make it. So now you say, okay, Miguel, I've taken my term sheet and my business plan. I walked around. I, I, I've gone. I did the family reunion thing. I, I went to everybody. Okay, I got this amount of money. And I say, great. Now it's time to network. Okay, now it's time to network. Now what you're going to be networking is, is you've got to find the people in your surrounding areas that are in the industry, that are in the industry that you want to be in or that are doing support industries, okay? And what I mean by support industry is it's somebody that can see benefit by you starting this company and they can benefit with better pricing or they can benefit because, you know, maybe they believe in it. A lot of these people, a lot of people refer to these as angel investors. Angel investors are guys and girls that kind of take flyers, you know, they'll, they, they like, they like, you know, the, 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 the real risky investment, you know, they, they, they'll be the first one in, you know, they'll also be the first one out, you know, but angel investors. And I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you right now, you put in your Google search. I know you got your computer on because I know you're listening to the podcast. So go ahead and open up a browser, go open up Google or your favorite search engine and search in and, and search angel groups in my area, angel investors in my area, or angel investors and put your zip code in, okay? It's going to give you a list of five or six different, okay, different uh, groups that you can get into, all right? And then you're going to want to do your presentation. And you guys, if you want to know how to do your pitch, you have to go back to one of the podcasts that Ron and I did that we talked about the pitch, all right? That's, that's the angel round, okay? Now, now you've gone and maybe you've got one, two, maybe even three angels put up some money. And angels will put up 25, 50. You know, I know some angels that will look for 100. You know what I'm saying? So they'll come in, all right? And then they'll want to, you know, maybe they'll want to mentor you or they'll want to sit on the board. You have to be flexible with this term sheet. You know, you might want to, you know, customize the term sheet a little bit, you know, as you move through these different rounds. So you have the F round, which is the family. Then you have the A round, which is the angel investors and outside investors. And most of these are qualified investors. And you have to make sure that you have a nice qualified, invest, a qualified investor uh, um, questionnaire, okay, that they want to make sure that you've, you've qualified these guys, okay. Uh, and, then, and then, Ron, it's, it's the symposiums. You know, we talked about it on the show. We you know we talk yeah. about it at the show that you know you got to find a couple of a couple of symposiums. You know, you know you can go to the Reggae Money Symposium that's going to be in Las Vegas that Ron and I are hosting. You can come there and see if you can find a couple of check writers, or you can go around and find you know some crowdfunding groups. There are some crowdfunding groups that are doing some real nice things uh, for guys who are looking to raise that two hundred and fifty to five hundred thousand dollars. There are a lot of groups out there, guys, that you could put your business plan or your PPM, your private placement memorandum, to work for you, so that way you could get that initial money. But in the proceeds, in the use of proceeds, you want to make sure that you're outlining on how your investor is going to have an exit strategy. How do you expect them to get their return on their investment? Because a lot of the guys are going to be looking at it and going, oh, oh, you're going to be doing a reggae, huh? So, so my money is going to be being used to, to fund the company a little bit of capital and then also to raise more money through a reggae. Ah, oh, so, so you're working with an attorney. Oh, you've you, you got an auditor. Oh, okay. you got a marketing yeah, firm. Oh, marketing good. Order. You know, right, right. you got it right because you've already lined up some of these things. You've taken some preliminary, you've taken some preliminary meetings on some of this stuff. Okay, so we've done the, the F round, which is the family round. We've done the A round, which is the angel round. And then we've done the symposium, the S round, that you've done a couple of symposium, a couple of the crowdfunding groups. Maybe you've done some network marketing. You know, Ron, you're a big proponent of this, man. How many of these different marketing things that you go to that you'll sit into just so that way you can hear the guy either pitch his company or hear the guy out? And how many times have you actually been drawn to somebody and said, Oh man, you know that sounds like a really good idea. That's something that I haven't heard about in a long time. And you actually pull the guy aside and say, "Hey, uh, you know, I can do this or I can do that, and I can help you out this or this way." Or you know what? I can make an introduction to two or three guys for you. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because that's what you got to do. You got to network yourself a little bit. Yeah, networking because, is really, really important. Yeah. Especially yeah, here yeah, because, it, because we, 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 get, we, we get all the shows coming to town too. So there's no excuse for not going to some of these things. They're, they're really interesting, and there's, there's a lot of them out there. Absolutely, Ron. And you got to yeah. find, guys. Listen, listen, what I'm trying to explain to you, I'm going to flip this around a little bit for you, so that way you guys really get the, ju- the gist of what I'm talking about. You have the idea, you, you have the business plan, you have all the things that are necessary for you to be able to accomplish your goal, okay? You've got to have a nice, strong PPM. You've got to have all these things, the business plan, the term sheet. You want to have all of that worked out. So when you sit down in front of somebody that's potentially going to give you some money, that's going to stroke you a check, you want them to have confidence in you, okay? And if you don't have confidence in yourself, they're not going to do anything for you. You have to have confidence, and you've got to have some skin in the game because if you don't have skin in the game and you haven't put up in a little bit of your money into this thing, nobody's going to want to dance with you. Nobody's going to want to come to the dance. You've got to have, you got to have all those elements worked out prior to prior to sitting down with your initial investor. And you probably want to practice on a couple of people, you know, some friends and family. You might want to practice on them and say, well, why didn't you want to invest? And get all of the no's out of the way up front. That's what I always tell people. I say, it's not about the no's. The no's are great because if you get a no, then you understand why. So then how can you take the no away? You know, so say, okay, well, I, I thought that this was weak. Okay, great. Now you know what the no is. Take the no away. And once you start taking away the no's, what's left, Ron? A big fat yes. And then at the end wow. of a big fat yes is normally a check. Okay? So, so guys, I mean, you know, there, is there a secret recipe? Um, you know, is there some formulation that you can do? No. There's just best practices. There's best practice. One of the best practices is pitch as many times as you can. Go to confident people that you have uh, that you confide in, so that way you're able to pitch them and get the objections. Two, f- offer to friends and family. Do that initial round. Get those people up behind you and excited about your project. Because if you can get those people excited about your project, that's the first thing that's going to lift your confidence. The second yeah. is the angel round. You got to go to these angels and you got to find them in your area. Maybe you got to travel a little bit. Maybe you got to go outside of Los Angeles. Maybe you got to go to Inglewood. Maybe you got to go to uh, uh, Brentwood. Maybe you got to go to the surrounding areas, uh, you know, uh, in California, San Diego. You know, maybe you got to travel a little bit to, to find where these angels are at. Maybe you're going to have to make a couple of presentations. And then you're going to have to hit the road show. You know, by that time, you've, you've gotten a couple of investors already. You've probably got your business plan working a little bit. And now all you're doing is solidifying, you're solidifying your team and your reggae. So that way, when you start talking to these symposiums, you're just looking to get that last little bit of money to put you over the top. Because the next round of symposium that you're doing, guess what? You're not pitching the term sheet anymore. Now you're pitching the reggae. Yeah, Miguel, you talked about a term sheet. You talked about the private placement memorandum. Uh, who, who creates those documents? All right. So, so there's a lot of ways of getting those documents done, okay? You know, um, uh, I've seen a lot of great term sheets that, have, that are available online, okay? There's a lot of resources. I mean, you could go to an attorney. You can go to a group that does PPMs and term sheets. You know, there's a lot of writing in there. There's a lot of disclosure stuff in there. You know, you may want to you may want to do a simple term sheet. You know that you can look up. I mean, you can Google term sheet, okay, investment term sheet, and you can find out what exactly what a term sheet is. And then you could take that term sheet around to like let's say your founders take that term sheet very simple. Says I want to invest say a thousand dollars and I want to buy you know what a uh, thousand shares, okay, at uh, at twenty five cents a thousand shares. Is that five hundred bucks? Four, five, five hundred, yeah. So five hundred bucks. So you say five hundred bucks. However many shares that is, okay. And that five hundred bucks maybe pays for legal to look at your next round of financing. Mm-hmm. See, that's what happens, guys. Is that you know you start off very simple, and you use some of the proceeds to kind of refine your offering. You refine your offering. You get better. You get better in your offering. You get better.